Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. A very very good morning to all of you. I hope you all are doing well. Now before starting our daily session for the Hindu newspaper, here are two announcements for all of you. One is that here is a quick, uh, here is a uh, workshop for all of you, a free workshop. Those who want to ace uh, their preparation for UPSC Civil Services Examination for 2024. So here is a workshop, please attend that. And it is on 20th January 2024 and it is at 6 p.m. And it, it will be taken by a renowned faculty, Anubhav Saraj. Okay, so please register for that and the registration link is there in the uh, description box of this video. And the second announcement is that those who want to have a one-to-one -one counseling session, those who have a doubts related to their approach, related to books, for this UPSC Civil Services Examination, then again we have a Google form which is available in our description box also and a pinned comment also. So please fill that, ensure that you have filled your all details, our mentor will definitely contact you and you can resolve your all doubts. So let's start our session for today. These are the topics that we are going to take up for today. Two are from mains perspective and four are from prelims perspective. So let's start our discussion for mains uh, section. So here is your first article. Now this article is on page number six and this article can be related to your GS paper one geography as well as GS paper three agriculture also. Okay, now what is this article? Gearing up for change. Okay, if we talk about the basic context of this article, then in this article, uh, the writer or the article says that IMD, basically Indian Meteorological Department, which was established by the British authorities, actually it analyzes the what? Weather patterns, basically climate patterns and also the rainfall patterns and rainfall patterns are very, very important to understand the agriculture seasons also, okay? Because if you know the rainfall pattern, then on the basis of that, farmers will like they will sow or they will uh, reap all the benefits from this agricultural uh, sector so here if we study the background of this meteorological history though imd was established by british authorities but before that we have evidences related to meteorological hist uh, de department so if we study from 3000 BC, bc if we trace the history from 3000 bc then upanishads also talks about this cloud formation seasonal cycles caused by the movement of earth around the sun moreover second varamira's brihat samhita which was written in the 500 ce or 6th century it also gives us the knowledge of atmospheric pressure also then the third one Cortelia's earth shastra also talks about the scientific measurements of rainfall and its application to countries revenue and relief work as you all know rainfall uh, they, they, this is a cycle if you understand here so if there is a good rainfall let's see so obviously there will be a positive consequences upon agriculture also and if agriculture is a good one if a production is also a good one what will happen revenue generation in a positive way okay so this is a cycle okay so if revenue is good if rainfall is uh, like it is in an empty amount then agriculture will have a positive consequence and in that uh, revenue generation will be in a positive way so rain comes from the sun and that good rainfall in the rainy season was a key to bountiful agriculture and food for the people as you all know rainfall indirectly means it is very very important for the livelihood of people okay in fact, Kali Dasa, in his epic Meghdood, which was written in the 7th century, this book, this treatise also talks about date of onset of the monsoon over central India and traces the path of the monsoon clouds. So, this is the background. This is the ancient history related to your meteorological department. Though a full-fledged uh, uh, department was not established, but we have traces related to the like evidences related to how uh, these uh, people, these Varamira and Kautilya and how this Kalidasa, they are talking about the monsoon, pattern of monsoon, how they are talking about the atmospheric pressure. So these, this is the evidence or this is the like evidence or you can praise the meteorological history from ancient history. Now if we talk about uh, the beginning of this meteorological history from the modern period, then 
British authorities established many uh, meteorological observatories of the world. Okay, and if we see here, first was established in Calcutta in 1785, and second was established in Madras in 1796. Moreover, if you know that there were two societies which were also formed during this period only. One was your Asiatic Society of Bengal also. Again, it was established in Calcutta in 1784 and the another one in 1804 at Bombay. Okay, both of them, both of them promoted scientific studies in meteorology in India also. So, here again you can say that though a full-fledged meteorological department was not there, but yeah evidences are there okay to know or to uh, you can say expand this meteorological uh, uh, history department now a catastrophic event took place and after that there was a much needed effort taken by the british authorities to establish this imd now what was that catastrophic event actually there was a tropical cyclone that struck in calcutta in 1864 and this was followed by failures of the monsoon rains in 1866 and 1871 Okay, now you know that British authorities are what? Revenue oriented company. Okay, what they actually want is profit or you can say they were, they only want is their revenue. Okay, so when this catastrophic event took place, their revenue got hampered, their profit got hampered. So, to know about this rainfall pattern, they established this what? IMD. Okay, India Meteorological Department in 1875. You can see that history, you can see the chronology like last event took place in 1871. Okay, so this, this event, that's why this event was a very, very important one and after that, this department got established, bringing all meteorological work under a single umbrella and that single umbrella is your IMD. Okay, so progressively it is expanding its infrastructure for meteorological observations, communication, forecasting and weather services. So since it has established, it has expanded its network. Okay. So, as I said, British authorities, they were from the beginning, when they came to India, they were from the beginning only concerned about their revenue and profit. Okay. So, when these catastrophic events took place, they thought to establish this IMD in 1875. Okay. To determine what? Past observations of wind, rain and sunshine. Okay. So, that's why IMD has collected stores of meteorological data that underlie its forecast of the monsoon. So, this is the, you can say, background of this IMD, how it was established, what traces we have in ancient Indian history. So, now, this is your history. Okay. Now, coming back to our article here. So, now, uh, IMD, though this is a research institute again, Council on Energy, Environment and Water. Actually, it is a think tank. Okay. And uh, it analyzes rainfall patterns. Basically, on the uh, subdivisional level or you can say TESI level, from 1982 to 2022 okay so it conducted the survey okay what survey rainfall pattern but please please focus here not on the national level only the sea level okay now what is the statistics so these are all the facts you don't need to revise you don't need to learn all of them just understand that what is happening in this rainfall pattern okay so rainfall is increasing in more than half of india's 4400 or tehsils or sub districts okay so it means in the 4400 tehsils rainfall is increasing okay now 55 percent of tehsils have seen a rise in rainfall okay or in other words we can say that 55 percent of tehsils okay have seen the rise in rainfall but here here this article also says that 11 percent of them have also experienced what decreasing rainfall okay and this decrease occurred largely during the critical southwest monsoon okay southwest monsoon is from your june to september okay there are i hope you know that india which has a monsoon uh, kind of a climate so in that case we have two kinds of a monsoon here one is your southwest and the another one is your northeast monsoon so of the tehsils experiencing lower rainfall about 68 percent saw reduced rainfall in all the monsoon months from june to september so 
please understand the facts here. So first of all, the uh, article is saying that the increasing rainfall have been witnessed in this 4,400 tehsils or in other words, you can also say is that 55% of the tehsils have seen the increasing rainfall. While on the other hand, article is also talking about the decreasing rainfall pattern and this is witnessed in 11% of them. Or in other words, he uh, article also says that 68% of this total decreasing rainfall uh, pattern. Now 68% saw this decreasing rainfall especially in this which monsoon? Southwest monsoon. Okay. <clears throat> so this is your basic figures here. Now here one more fact is here 87% showed a decline during the initial monsoon months of June and July also. Okay. Which are crucial for the sowing phase of Kharif crops, Kharif crops, I hope you know that cotton, groundnut and rice are your uh, Kharif crops. So, in this season, June to July, when these Kharif crops are sown by the farmers, actually in that uh, situation, in that, uh, in those months, 87% show decline during the initial uh, monsoon months and most of these tehsils are in the, which region? Indo-Gangetic Plains, which are very, very favorable for your agriculture, your northeastern India, your Indian Himalayas region. So basically, you have to understand that, that there is a decrease in the rainfall pattern, okay. But this decrease in the rainfall pattern is in the major areas of agricultural production, especially in the Kharif season, okay. So this is analysis that the article talks about. Moreover, if we talk about the extremes at the district level, then 30% of district witnessed several more years of deficient rainfall and 38% saw many years of excessive rainfall. So again, though this is a balanced figure, 30% and 38, not more than that, not less than that. But again, 30% are again witnessing what? Deficient rainfall and 38% are ex uh, witnessing what? Excessive rainfall. This is a pattern of what? Climate change. So, either what is happening, either there is a drought kind of a situation or a extreme kind of a weather events are taking place, okay. So, basically here article is drawing the disting distinction between two kind of a climate change. One is your drought one, okay, and the another one is your extreme weather events, floods kind of a situation, okay. So, 23 districts including your New Delhi, Bengaluru, Nilgiris, Jaipur, Kutch and Indoor, they have experienced both extremes, okay, with a higher number of both deficient as well as excessive rainfall years, okay. So, this is a very concerned issue here, okay. Several tehsils in Rajasthan, Gujarat, Central Maharashtra and parts of Tamil Nadu that have historically been dry regions because they never witnessed such an excessive amount of a rainfall, now they are also witnessing this kind, this the huge amount of a rainfall. So this is a like reverse kind of a situation. Those who should witness small amount of a rainfall, they are they are actually witnessing higher amount. And those who should uh, those districts which should like uh, witness higher amount, they are like witnessing lower. So this is a vice versa kind of a situation. Okay. So, increasing erratic rainfall patterns. Now, article again talks about that rainfall from the northeast monsoon that sets in during October, November and December, primarily in peninsular India. Okay, this is a, uh, you can say, retreating kind of a monsoon has increased by more than 10%. So, again, this article is again creating a distinct, first it has created a distinction between drought and your extreme weather events. Now, again, difference it is creating between southwest monsoon. Okay. Here your southwest monsoon and your northeast monsoon. So on the one side it is saying that northeast monsoon has increased by more than 10% over the last decades in approximately 80% of tehsils in Tamil Nadu, 44% in Telangana, 39% in Andhra Pradesh respectively. Okay, so northeast monsoon which is basically witnessed in your peninsular India, actually it is increasing by 10% in all of these districts. But if we see the other side of the coin here, southwest monsoon, which only uh, covers your June to September, it accounts at 76% of India's ra annual rainfall with about 11% coming from the northeast monsoon. So, on the one side, if we are seeing that this north northeast monsoon, which is increasing 10%, okay, in a decade, but its contribution is very less here. 
only 11 percent while on the other hand the southwest monsoon as we have seen in the previous uh, on the previous slides it is actually not showing the uh, you can say consistent pattern it is actually contributing a huge amount towards india's rainfall pattern okay so while the remaining india states are usually dry during this period several tehsils of maharashtra and goa on the west coast and odisha and west bengal on the east coast have also been reporting increasing rainfall during these winter months so it means that this northeast monsoon which actually causes rainfall in your peninsular india now it is also causing rainfall in on the western side and your eastern side also especially your maharashtra goa odisha and west bengal now because why because of your what cyclones which occurred in your arabian sea and bay of bengal okay so now what is the way forward here as you know india is going to our government of india is just going to release a union budget also and economic survey also so it will be crucial to focus on future proofing the economy against increasingly erratic rainfall patterns because this rainfall is very very important as i am again and again repeating because rainfall we in our india where upon agriculture if we see the statistics 62 60, 60 to 62% of people are depend upon that so in that case if this is a huge uh, you can say population which is dependent up upon agriculture if it is not witnessing consistent pattern of production then obviously it will also impact the livelihood of our citizens okay so the monsoons impact the food we eat the water we drink and also our energy transition because you know that from water government is also producing a lot of energy okay so with increasing extreme weather events okay somewhere you are witnessing huge amount of rain okay somewhere you are like witnessing drought so hyper local climate uh, hyper local climate risk assessments and action plans are the way to go for india and to keep leading in climate action and disaster risk reduction okay so this will help save lives also livelihoods also and your infrastructure also okay now going back to uh, now uh, coming back uh, coming to our next article which is on page number six okay this article is on page number uh, page number six and this article can be related to your gs paper to science and tech now basically this article talks about two kind of a things one is your scientist role okay scientist role in uh, innovation you can say in administration their dual role in both these fields and the second aspect is the comparison between india and us okay so let's start a discussion for this article so sustain as you all uh, as you all know that india is going to achieve its uh, 5 billion trillion uh, 5 trillion economy dollar target so in that case india needs a sustainable uh, scientific development okay because why i am saying that if you have a good scientific uh, development then only you will be able to achieve your economic progress okay even you can witness this industrial even you can see this industrial revolution also okay so when this industrial revolution took place in britain first what happened its economy also got boosted so obviously obviously science is a major science is a science and technology and research and development is a major zone from where you can like progress your economy from zero to above level okay so alive to this reality the government is also overhauling india's science establishment which includes your setting up the new national research foundation and your restructuring of drdo as well so government is restructuring them okay now if we study uh, the r and d here so india india is actually like less contributing to its r and d okay if we compare it uh, if we compare it with other countries like us and your china so india's low overall expenditure on r and d around 0.7% of gdp compared to 35 3.5% of united states and 2.4% for china so here students please remember that here gdp is also different so let's say if us has a thousand gdp let's say okay so 3.5 percent of thousand okay if china let's say has 500 gdp then it is your 2.4 percent of 500 okay and if india has your gdp of 100 okay then 0.7 percent of 100 so it's not their gdps are same their gdp is also different so in that case india is contributing a very less amount of its uh, gdp 
to research and development okay so space program is witnessing also narrowing leads even in fact you see that in 2022 isro stood as a distant eight on launch numbers with foreign startups racing ahead on key technologies such as reusable rockets so if you see that india is not innovating that much even if you see in our india in our, in india if you see that there is just tell me a single mobile manufacturing which has its own manufacturing unit in india it's not that case so in that case again in the uh, space programs also isro stands at the eighth place if we compare it with the startups of different countries isro is lacking there because it is not innovating as compared to other startups in different countries so in fact nuclear energy again it is a very critical uh, department okay being late comers to small modular re reactors also thorium emissions remain unrealized so these are like critical zones where india has not made that much progress even moreover there are other zones also like genomics robotics and artificial intelligence even there are number of articles in the previous edition that which talks about this artificial intelligence and india's proficiency also like india needs to like cooperate with us and other countries those who have like Pro progressed in this artificial intelligence but it is not doing that so here article here the actually this article has been written by two authors here two writers here so both of these writers are saying that there are number of challenges in this science and tech or you can say research and development area first of all dominance of the public sector in scientific endeavors okay so crucial funding for scientific projects is approved at slow pace first of all if you see funding is not provided at a right time at a right place okay delays in the approval process obviously it will happen if you are not giving funding at a right time delays will happen and delays will eventually lead to what missed opportunities and setbacks okay disparities in decision making processes across different funding levels okay this could this could result in unequal distribution of resources among various scientific projects potentially favoring certain areas or institutions over others okay so here writer both these writers are talking about the funding issue so first issue we have is your funding issue okay so funding issues are not provided at right time right place second issue the writers are talking about is consistent funding despite setback so second again derives from the funding but there is no consistent funding okay which is essential for your sustainable uh, scientific projects and emphasizes the importance of being able to manage occasional failures in the scientific research process also okay so now the second first they have raised this funding issue now the second issue is related to scientists which have been raised by both of these writers so uh, the article the article says that there are like three groups of scientists here okay some pretend to be top international level academics okay so we will only deal with international level of academicians okay second group is micro managing their institutions okay like accounts uh, accounts uh, and other kind of a stuff third are those who are who want to sit in a variety of institutional committees okay so in this article how many groups are there three groups of scientists article is talking about okay so they want to become directors they want to become vice chancellors they want to become secretaries to th all these institutions like you can see here uh, institutes of technology indian institutes of technology indian institutes of scientific education and research okay your uh, csir defense drdo so now there are like three groups of scientists which are emerging right now so these top scientists not government bureaucracies are at a helm of india science and administration so now if you see that there is a, here is a very major problem what is the problem here now these scientists are holding two roles here one is science innovation okay second one is administration which should be in the hands of indian bureaucrats but no indian scientists are taking in their in their own hands okay so basically they are performing what dual role okay so in fact if you see those who are the students of public administration optional also you can see that the situation is there in your uh, subject also politicians who are managing politics also and administration also so same case here also scientists those who want to hold their research and development also on the one hand and administration on the other hand okay so this is a very major issue and a good 
actually there is a norm that a good scientist will also be a good science administrator also but this is a wrong fact okay because if you see uh, the performance performance of these institutions they show that this is a very wrong concept here so that's why that's why these scientists are entering into the field of administration and here now these outsized role of scientists which they want to perform first administration administering an organization as complex as a national lab so those who want to be a part of administration actually administration and your science uh, works in your scientific uh, your lab and your observatories are very very different okay because administration is a very complex one okay and it needs us such kind uh, some set of a uh, skills okay for example your allocation of money resources and time while on the other hand these scientists are very individualism kind of a nature constructive ego and erudition okay so that's why they have a different skill set okay on the one hand administration needs your all these skills allocation of money resources and time and your flexibility firmness and realism while on the other hand scientists don't possess that so that's why this also creates a problem okay the fundamental role of an administration is to prioritize one undertaking over another in line with policy and to ensure that resources assigned to one project do not starve others but if you see that if a scientist a if a scientist a is a administrator also of a specific organization then what will happen it will obviously finance its own research and development it will not give funding to other projects so in that case what will happen this will result what unbiased decision okay unbiased decisions will come up okay so this is a problematic situation okay second the article is talking about deficiency in the training provided to individuals involved in scientific projects when it comes to selecting the right metrics for decision making now here we have two terms right metrics and decision making okay so it means that again if we talk about our education system then our education system is not giving these skills to those scientists okay which skills basically right metrics you have to choose a right metrics for your decision making okay so the consequence is what lack of training again so it is described as absurdities okay so both of these writers are saying that this lack of training for choosing right metrics for decision making is actually what absurdities okay where entire projects can be derailed due to issues such as single invoice or acquisition okay scientists by virtue of their training may lack the skills necessary for effective project management especially when it comes to what because project management if you see what do you require basically budgeting also okay budgeting is the main thing that you have to do okay and if scientists are biased in that case obviously other projects will starve in that case so in project management in administration first foremost skill that you require is budgeting second thing is managing with stakeholders but as i have said these uh, scientists are such an egoistic uh, uh, persons they don't do that so that's why it uh, compromises what your time also your cost also and your opportunities also okay so administration requires again a different skill set including the ability to translate policies into practical outcomes okay and make decisions considering multiple factors okay so scientific prioritization versus administration prioritization so this is a dilemma that scientists have to deal with okay so they should prioritize so when they are in, into the administration they should deal with it administration only they should not come with their biased approach okay so third problem that uh, that these writers have raised the scope for conflicts of interest in the present dispensation is huge so again this is a repetition of uh, statements that uh, if a scientist is into the administration obviously it will promote its own projects it will fund its own projects so in that case what will happen conflict of interest will come okay so again scandals can also happen like high plagiarism text uh, rates paid publications in the uh, reputable journals and under the table dealings to garner government funding have become normalized now so these are the issues that have been raised by all uh, both of these writers now they are also comparing this with uh, usa 
Okay, so what is happening in USA? So it's a very different one. Actually, they have created the line between scientists and administrators. How? So the separation of administrators and scientists is something which must robust science establishment generally embrace. Okay, so labs being embedded in university. So in universities, obviously in schools also you have physics lab, you have chemistry lab, you have bio labs and other labs also. They are run by scientists. That's okay. They select scientists for an administrative role quite early on their careers okay so in that case if they are in if they are into the administration in their beginning of their career then they will not have a biased approach okay because from the beginning they will be taught what administrative skills okay so this is a good thing from the us okay so such selected scientists administrators by and large only carry out what administrative task okay so that's why in fact from the uh, if you see the school example also from the nursery class you will learn this a b c d okay you will not learn this a b c d in your 10th class so this is a situation which is happening in your usa okay so scientists those who want to become an administrator or those uh, institute want to make them an, as an administrator administrator they will be indulged in the beginning of their career okay so that administrative skills will be brought up in their uh, nature okay so here what is the conclusion so as india which is again focusing on its economic progress infrastructure and so and so on so if india wants to remove its scientific establishment one must really question the utility of scientist okay being given administrative task whether as additional assignments or as a full time vice chance, vice chancellors or directors okay perhaps your american middle way arrangement which they have done is the answer okay so again here both of these writers are basically questioning about what basically your utility of scientist okay because if scientist if these scientists if uh, the line uh, will be drawn between scientists and administrators obviously our scientific development will take place and all the other hand what will happen our economic progress also and infrastructure also okay now at some point india has to come to the same conclusion that the world of business did in 908 1908 if you see 19, 1908 this masters of business administration was launched this course was launched so it was established at harvard so administration is a very important subject that's why this mba course was launched so the administrative setup of any complex is its central nervous system and the same is true for the science establishment also so if there is a like uh, you can say if you want to improve your scientific research and development what do you need is your scientific administration will be in a good manner okay it should be a strong okay without addressing these core concerns india science establishment will continue to do injustice to its economic and strategic aspirations okay now go, uh, now st starting with the prelims uh, articles so here is your first article this is on page number 4 and this article can be related to your gs paper to government policies and interventions now what is the news here so andhra pradesh has become a second state to take up your caste census okay first state was bihar okay now another state is your andhra pradesh okay so andhra pradesh government has provided uh, it has kick started its uh, comprehensive caste based census so uh, for that a special phone app has been designed by the government to conduct the census okay and uh, more than 700 caste groups are available on the mobile application for the public to choose theirs and there is the no caste option is also has been has also been provided now what is the significance of this caste census now let's see actually why andhra pradesh is launching this caste system because such data will ensure that no intended beneficiary for the navaran tanalu is left out okay well, now what is this it is actually nine welfare schemes of the andhra pradesh government it will also assist in adjusting existing policies also devising new policies also for education and employment okay so one is this aim second is this aim now third objective third significance of these caste census is sustain themselves their livelihoods and how they can be better supported okay 
फोर्थ वन टू गेन अ कॉम्प्रीहेंसिव अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ पॉपुलेशन डायनामिक्स ओके स्पेशली इन द रीजन विच आर डॉमिनेट बाय बी सी ग्रुप्स टू अड्रेस इशूज बाय द मोस्ट मार्जिनलाइज पॉपुलेशन ऑल्सो एंड एड इन स्टडिंग द बिलो पॉवर्टी लाइन पॉपुलेशन अमंग एस सी एस टी एंड अदर माइनॉरिटीज ओके सो दिस इज द सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ योर कास्ट सेंसेस नाउ इफ वी सी द हिस्ट्री ऑफ दिस सेंसेस सो सेंसेस वाज फर्स्ट स्टार्टेड इन 1881 इट वाज अ कॉलोनियल एक्ट यू कैन से कॉलोनियल एक्शन टू लाइक देन आफ्टर दैट इन 1931 सोशियो इकोनॉमिक एंड कास्ट सेंसेस टुक प्लेस ओके विद द प्राइमरी ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ व्हाट अगेन गेदरिंग डाटा ऑन द इकोनॉमिक स्टेटस ऑफ Indian families in both rural and urban areas. Okay, so census offers. So if we see the difference between these two, your census and your S E double C, then both of them have a different objective. Okay, so census offers a broad overview because it includes every group. While on the other hand, your socio-economic and caste census includes what your purpose of identifying recipients eligible for state support. Okay, so. Here again we have a constitutional provision also. There is an article also, Article three forty. There is a mandate to appoint a commission to examine the conditions of socially and educationally backward classes and provide recommendations regarding the measures that government should take. Okay. Now our another article which is on page number eight. Okay, this can be related to your GS paper three, space and technology. I hope you uh, know that about your Chandrayaan three. ओके लूनर मिशन ओके सो देर इज अ न्यूज रिलेटेड टू एयर दैट नासा स्पेस क्राफ्ट पिंग्स चंद्रायन थ्री लैंडर ऑन द मून नाउ व्हाट इज द न्यूज हियर सो नासा स्पेस क्राफ्ट हैज सक्सेसफुली पिंग इंडिया चंद्रायन थ्री लैंडर ऑन द मून लैंडर मींस विक्रम लैंडर ओके सो अकॉर्डिंग टू नासा एक्चुअली देर इज अ लेजर बीम विच वॉज ट्रांसमिटेड एंड रिफ्लेक्टेड बिटवीन वॉट Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, okay. So and the Vikram lander for the first time on the lunar surface. So ba basically, a laser beam was transmitted and reflected between what LRO and Vikram lander. Okay. So this successfully explains what your new style of precisely locating targets on the moon surface. Okay. So. Here, what is important for us is your retroflectors. Okay, so they are like small array of mirrors. Okay, and what what is the use of it? So sending laser pulses towards an object and measuring how long it takes the light to bounce back is a commonly used way to track the locations of Earth orbiting satellites from the ground. Okay, so now here we have a laser. Laser actually is a ref, uh, retro uh, uh, retro reflector. Okay, of Chandrayaan three. Okay, now this is again what not indigenously developed. Okay, it is though on board on Chandrayaan three, but uh, it is it is not indigenously developed. It is a NASA's LRA. Okay, so it was developed by which uh, organization? Space organization NASA. Okay, so it comprises eight corner tube retro reflectors on a hemispherical support structure. Okay, so this is the you can say uh, description of this laser okay now next article which is on page number 8 this article can be related to your gs paper 2 security forces and their mandate and this article is think tank warns whatsapp users of scams and data breach so those i hope not those but yeah everyone is using whatsapp these days so whatsapp has launched a very new uh, feature on their app and that is screen sharing okay now there is an organization bureau of public research and development now this organization which comes under the ministry of home affairs this warns about this uh, new feature okay so what is the context here so the bureau of bprd has warned users of different scams perpetrated through messaging platforms whatsapp okay the policy think tank under the union ministry of home affairs while listing do's and don'ts they have noted that that the social media intermediary has been informed about the data breach acts and numerous government bodies and ministry officials are already working on it because in india we have a lots of whatsapp users around 400 million users are there so that's why this organization is talking about that that there is a new feature related to your screen sharing and what will happen those like resembling from your near and dear ones they will ask you to share your screen and 
may be in that case they will snatch your personal details basically related to your bank retail bank details your personal information so this will be a harmful for you okay because this will cost you a lot of money so that's why this organization has created a warning among uh, users whatsapp users now for us what is important for your prelims perspective is your bprd okay so bureau of policy research and development okay it was established in 1970 okay it replaced your policy police research advisory council which was formed in 1966 okay what is the objective here to identify the needs and requirements of the police force in the country undertake research projects and offer recommendations to address the challenges encountered by the police okay so it operates under the ministry of home affairs the government focuses on creating modern effective and responsive security architecture that fosters a sense of safety across all segments of society okay so initially the bureau commenced operations with two divisions here the research publication and statistics division and the another division was development vision moreover it also ex now what are the objectives so it under it examines the underlying reasons for criminal activities preventive measures strategic to enhance investive investigation techniques administrative structures and juvenile delinquency platform for engagement with various stakeholders in policing and correctional administration okay the collaborative insights from practitioners academia and civil society contribute to policy considerations in the realms of policing and prisons extend support through policy research programs at the state level conducts regular evaluations of the equipment utilized by indian police force ensuring the provision of a new and upgraded tool in area such as arms and ammunition okay now our last article for today prelims bites page number 10 gs paper 3 conservation and this article how do you plan to save the great indian bustard supreme court ask government now here what is important for us is though the supreme court uh, has directed the center to come clean by february on its plans to save the critically endangered gib okay great indian bustard okay now uh, let's discuss about this uh, species great indian bustard okay it is a state bird of rajasthan first of all second it is also known by the other name biological name ardeutis nigriceps okay it is recognized as a flagship species for grassland ecosystem as it indicates what overall health of these habitats okay it is found in which states rajasthan gujarat maharashtra karnataka and andhra pradesh and as per the iucn it is a critically endangered species okay as per the sites it is included in appendix 1 and as per the cms it is included in appendix 1 again and wildlife protection act 1972 has uh, has categorized this uh, gib under scheduled one now please share an answers in the comment section related to the schemes and policies for its conservation okay our def our team will definitely evaluate that so please comment your answers okay related to it okay now here we have a two mains practice questions okay so you have to answer both of them and uh, please share your answers with our uh, team and our team will definitely evaluate that and uh, thank you so much for attending this session again here is a quick announcement for all of you if you want to have a one to one counseling session for your upsc civil services examination 2024 then please please fill a google form which is available in our comment section also in our pinned comment also and description box also and uh, moreover please please support us by sharing and liking this uh, video and sharing with your fellow aspirants and please subscribe to our channel thank you so much goodbye take care